Let every go signal remind you that you do go farther with Signal Gasoline. The Signal Oil Program, bringing you another strange tale by the Whistler. Tonight, the story of a fabulous fortune with no one to claim it, and a search that ended with Finder's Weepers. And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, many secrets hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know, and presently I'll tell you the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. But now a tip I think you'll appreciate about the expected battery shortage this winter. One out of every four motorists who needed a new battery last winter couldn't get one. And this winter shortage is likely to be even more serious for these two reasons. First, all cars are a year older, so more of them will need new batteries. And secondly, fewer new batteries will be available to civilians because of increased demand of the Army. That means if you want a place safe, now is the time to find out what condition your battery is in. The easy way to do that is to drive into your neighborhood signal gasoline dealer for a free battery inspection. If tests show you need a new battery, be wise. Get a good one, one that will last. Most Signal gasoline dealers still have a limited number of the famous deluxe quality Signal batteries. These big, rugged batteries are built to Signal's own specifications for longer, trouble-free service. In fact, the Signal Oil Company backs each one with a guarantee, up to two years. With such a battery in your car, you won't have to worry about shortage because you'll be set for quick starts for a long time to come. And now, The Whistler. Inside a darkened room in a great old mansion in Los Angeles, an elderly man lies unconscious. He's the well-known industrialist A.R. Peters, and a doctor bends over his still form. Outside the closed door stand two men, Alan Fearmont, Peter's business partner, and John Blackburn, his secretary. They speak in low, hushed tones. How long has the doctor been in there? Almost an hour now. Has he told you anything? Nothing. I called him as soon as Mr. Peters became ill. He hasn't left his side. It seems very strange to me. Arthur never complained of his heart. What do you mean, strange? Heart attacks are not uncommon? No, no, but... In all the years of our business partnership, I've never known him to have even a flutter. What are you driving at, Mr. Fairmont? You're not suggesting... I'm not suggesting anything. I only said it was strange. What's the matter with you, young man? You're not suffering from a guilty conscience, are you? Certainly not. No, no, of course not. These last five years as Arthur's secretary have been profitable for you, haven't they? I look out for myself. Oh, doctor. How is he? Frankly, Mr. Fairmont, I'm puzzled. He's running a high fever. And I'm sure he's fighting, but... But what? Well, it seems to be his heart. But Mr. Peter's condition before his illness gave no indication of any weakness. His health has been exceptionally good for his age. And what are his chances now? Not good. In fact, I'd advise you to notify any family right away. Ask them to come. It's that bad? Yes. I'll be back later. Good day, sir. Goodbye, doctor. Well, that means Celia. See... Si what do you know about Celia? I know that she's the only family he has. His daughter who ran away from home just before I came here and hasn't been heard from for yeah. five years. Yes, yeah, she just seemed to disappear. But now she might be coming back. In fact, it would be very profitable if she did come back. You know about that, too? Of course. As Mr. Peter's secretary, naturally, I know what is contained in his will. And I know about the change he made. If Celia Peters returned here before her 21st birthday, all would be forgiven, and she'd inherit a cool quarter of a million. Yes, that's right. I know something else, too. I looked up Celia's birthday. She'll be 21 the 17th of this month in just eight days. That's all the time there's left. You're mighty interested in Celia Blackburn. Why? Purely business, Fairmont. I don't understand. Well, Celia doesn't know about her inheritance. Unless someone tells her about it, she's not coming back here to claim it. But don't you suppose that information should be worth, we'll say, 50000 to her? You chiseling scoundrel. I've always had my doubts about you, Blackburn. 
Don't you have one ounce of common decency? A girl's father is dying, and you have the gall to plan coldly to blackmail her for part of her estate. Okay, forget it. I'll do it my own way. Oh, no, you won't, Blackburn. Because I'm going to find Celia myself and bring her back. As the closest friend of the family, it's my place, too, anyway. But now, well, you can just forget it, Blackburn. Because I'll see to it that Celia gets what's coming to her. You'll have to find her first, Vermont, and I doubt if you can do that before I do. We'll see about that. I'm leaving for New York tonight. All right, Fairmont. Maybe I'll see you there. Nice fellow, this Blackburn. You'll have to work fast, Fairmont. Two days have passed already, and you've just arrived in New York. Only six days left. In six days, you must find Celia Peters and convince her she must return with you. Six days to comb a city of seven million people for a girl whose face would be only vaguely familiar after five years. A girl who may have changed her name, moved away, or even have died. Yes, Fairmont, it's a hard task you've cut out for yourself. A hard task in such a short time. Can I help you, sir? Yes, I'd like a room, please. Yes, sir. Will you sign the register? Certainly. There you are. Mr. Fairmont of Los Angeles. <laughs> have you just arrived? Yes, yes. Oh, I'd, uh, I'd like to ask you something. You may be able to help me. I'll be glad. To this know. postcard here, is it uh, familiar to you? Oh, yes, sir. Those are our cards, yes. We put them in the room. This card was mailed from here about a year ago by a Miss Celia Peters. Is she registered here? Miss Celia Peters. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. She was registered here for quite a while, but she checked out about three months ago. Oh. Uh, do you have her forwarding address? I'm sorry, but she didn't leave one. You see, I know because there have been others asking about her. Others? Blackburn. Uh... You'll find your room quite pleasant, I'm sure. It has a wonderful who view Who were of... these other people who have been inquiring for Miss Peters? I'm sorry, sir, but I'm not at liberty to disclose the private affairs of our guests. It's an ironclad rule of the hotel. Boy, uh, take this gentleman to uh, 729. Up in the elevator you go, Fearmont. One strike against you. Blackburn's here and ahead of you. It's going to be more difficult than you imagine to find Celia Peters. You better get busy. Call that number you heard about. I'm a rookie in. This is Alan Fairmont speaking. Yes, sir. I'd like to employ the services of your agency. Well, I'll be at my office until 5 this afternoon. I'm at the Iroquois. Will you come over immediately? Well, can't you state your business over the phone? Impossible. Well, I don't make a habit of calling in prospective clients, Mr. Fairmont. I'm an actual client, Mr. Marukian. I've heard quite a lot about you, and I want a job done. I'd like you to do it. Would a $500 retainer help your decision? It is persuasive. $1,000. you have convinced me. The Iroquois? Room 729. I'll be there in 20 minutes. A private detective to trace Celia. Yes. But I, Marukian, isn't the only one in town. There's Pat Sheffield, and he too has received a call. Name Celia Peters, age about 21. Look, uh, how do I know this thing's on the level? Mr. Sheffield, I'm not in the habit of calling detective agencies just for recreation. Now, I've told you all about myself. That should be sufficient to convince you I'm serious. If it isn't, you'll have my check in tomorrow's mail to help you make up your mind. Okay, let's get on with the description. What does this girl do? What are her habits? Miss Peters left home five years ago after an argument with her father. She's pretty, rather small and blonde, according to those who knew her then. She working here in New York? Probably. She has no other means of support. Uh, and one more thing. Yeah? No publicity. None at all. The search must be kept quiet. You uh, don't want the police interested, I guess, eh? No. But not for the reasons you may think. You have my address, and I'll expect a report right away. We have no time to lose. <laughs> Fairmont? Yes. Marook in. Oh, come in, come in. Glad to know him. Here, <clears throat> sit down. First of all, here's, uh, here's your retainer. Well, thanks. I'll pay you an additional thousand when you find the person I want. He's in New York? She is. That is, I think she is. Old girl, huh? What can you tell me about her? Not very much, I'm afraid. But it's absolutely necessary that I find her, and without publicity. Discretion is the motto of my agency. Uh, I dare say. But there must be no slip-ups. Publicity would spoil everything. I understand. Her name's Celia Peters. Here. 
Here's a picture. That was taken about five years ago. I don't know if it'll help you, Annie. Well, she's a child. She was 16 at the time. Mm. Still have freckles? I don't know. Very pretty. That was snapped just a few days before she left home in Los Angeles. I've no doubt that she's even prettier today. Lots of jobs for a pretty girl like that here in New York. You know what she's doing? I'm not sure. The only word we've had from her in the last five years was this postcard sent from this hotel about a year ago. On it, she said she was working as a model. A model, yeah, that's the most logical for a pretty girl of her breeding. Then you've seen her pictures in the magazine. Oh, no. No, we haven't. Never. What's the matter? Don't you read magazines out there? Models are always photographed and get their pictures in the magazines. Yes, yes, but I've never seen Celia's picture in anything. And she's not a model, probably. Maybe she's going into show business. That's the next best place to find a pretty girl. Well, it's possible, I suppose. Although Celia wasn't trained for anything. She never worked a day in her life when she left home. Okay, if that's all the information you can give me, I'll get started. Fine, fine. Only, Marukian, I can't impress upon you too much. There's no time to lose. Miss Peters must be in Los Angeles within six days. And there may be others trying to reach her. It's imperative that I find her first. There's a quarter of a million dollars involved. I see. Then you're right. There is no time to lose. Yes, there's no time to lose. The search for Celia is on. I, Marukian, Detective Extraordinary, Pat Sheffield, Manhunter Deluxe, and who else? Each follows his own path. Sheffield calls on the rooming houses, the model agencies. Marukian tracks down the theatrical offices and nightclubs, the beauty parlors. Do you recognize the girl in this picture? No, never saw before. Call after call. The trail is hard to pick up. But there's something else to pick up, another hunter, crossing the trail time and time again. But I didn't call here before. Well, I gave the same information to another man yesterday. Another man? Is it Marukian, do you suppose, or is it... Blackburn? No, my name's not Blackburn. Yes. Mr. Blackburn seems to be getting ahead of you, Marukian. Or is it Sheffield? Maybe you better get together and compare notes. You'll find Sheffield down in Benny's bar, sipping a scotch. And you might find his conversation interesting. Even if you can't find out who he's working for, you might get a tip. This case is very interesting. A quarter of a million bucks. I wouldn't mind being in this Peter's girl's shoes. Hmm. Yeah. Thanks, Sheffield. What for? For an idea you've just given me. See you later. An idea. And what an idea, Marukian. Like to be in Celia Peters' shoes, Sheffield said. Shoes? Certainly. Why didn't you think of that? Celia Peters might be a model after all. All models aren't pictured full face. Some model shoes, hands, gloves. Maybe Celia has especially pretty hands or feet. Dimitri's photographing salon. You specialize in advertising photographs of shoes and footwear, don't you? Uh, well, do you have a model by the name of Celia Peters? No. Oh, Celia Arthur. Would you give me your address? No, I didn't call you before. This is... Uh, a fashion magazine. We want an interviewer. Uh-huh. 235 West 58th Street. Thanks. Yes, it was an idea. Now Marukian is on the track. He picks up Fearmont and they go to West 58th Street. Celia Arthur, eh? That's right. Yes, she might use that name. It's her father's first name. Are you sure this is the right address? Yep. Come on. Apartment B, back this way. All right. There's one thing I wanted to ask you, Mr. Fairmont, about Sheffield. Did you hire him, too? Yes, but he hasn't had much luck. No? Sheffield's not so dumb. I wonder. Maybe he just pa hasn't passed his information on to you. You don't mean you think that he would... I always... don't know. I just wanted to know if you were sure who Sheffield was working for. Let's see. Oh, this should be it. Apartment B. Why? Why, the door's ajar. Yes. We might just as well go on in. Wait, wait. There's someone sitting at a desk, going through papers. But that's not Celia. It's a man. It's Blackburn. <laughs> You are listening to the Signal Oil Program. 
Let every go signal remind you that you do go farther with signal gasoline. Just as Marukian and Fearmont seem on the point of finding Celia Peters, they arrive at her apartment only to discover that Blackburn has beaten them. And it seems that uh, you've done a good job of it, haven't you, Blackburn? Well, thank you. Just as Marukian and Fearmont seem on the point of finding Celia Peters, they arrive at her apartment only to discover that Blackburn has beaten them. And it seems that... Uh, You've done a good job of it, haven't you, Blackburn? Well, Fairmont, so you finally arrived. Where's Celia? She's not here. What have you done with her? She's perfectly safe, but you won't be able to find her, not before we get on that plane for Los Angeles. You mean Celia let you talk her into giving you a cut of her fortune? Well, let's say we've just reached a little agreement. The game's over, Fairmont, and I've won. You may as well call up your detective and go home. Why, you cheap little cheat. I'll have you thrown in jail for this outrage. I'll thrash you myself. Now, now, Mr. Fairmont, calm down. There's no need for violence. You shut up. Whose side are you on anyway? You're supposed to be working for me, and you let this chiseler get in ahead of us. Maybe you even helped him, for all I know. Maybe I did, for all you know. But I'm telling you now, there's only one thing to do. Bow out gracefully. Come on, Mr. Fairmont, let's go. All right, all right. But you haven't won yet, Blackburn. We'll see about that. Come on, Mr. Fairmont. Let's get out of here fast. I don't understand you, Marukian. Who are you working for? Me or Blackburn? Keep your shirt on and don't talk so loud. Now listen. Go back to your hotel and wait a few minutes. I'll have Celia Peters there inside of three hours. What? But Blackburn... Blackburn doesn't know any more about her than you do. He hasn't even seen her yet. How do you know that? I don't know for sure. But otherwise, why should he be waiting here in her apartment, rifling through the papers in her desk as he was when we came in? He's still looking for her himself. But then if he waits here, he'll get her when she comes home. Right. But we'll get her before she comes home. You leave it to me. I'm not sure I trust you, Marukian. All right, then. Don't. Only I don't charge for goods not delivered, so you can depend on me bringing in Celia Peters and soon. Yes, Mr. Fearmont, that's all you can do. Go back to your hotel and wait, trusting Marukian. But your first caller isn't Marukian. It's Sheffield. Come in, Sheffield. You're just in time. Thanks. Well, I guess we haven't had much luck. Eh? You exhausted your possibilities? Looks that way. It's pretty easy for a girl like that to be swallowed up in this big city. You're giving up, then. That's up to you, of course. I'll give you your fee. No, I didn't find her. I'm not entitled to anything. Could it be you've already gotten your fee from somebody else? What do you mean? I mean that... Yes? Who? Oh. Oh, all right. Thank you. Well, that was the desk clerk. He said Celia Peeper, Peters and I, Marukian, are on their way up. Celia Peters, eh? So we found her after all. Well, that lets me out, and I might as well be going. I'd rather you waited. I'd like for you to be here. You were just telling me that you didn't trust me, sir. And I... I don't trust Marukian either. So I want you both here. Well, here they are now. Come in. Well, Mr. Fairmont, here she is, Celia Peters. Hello, Mr. Fairmont. You're Celia Peters? Yes. Well, don't you recognize me? I know I've changed in these five years, but I thought you'd still remember me. Yes, of course I'd remember Celia Peters. Mr. Marukian... Would you say there was much resemblance between the photograph I showed you and this girl? Well, that wasn't a very good picture, and it's been a long time. What would you say, Sheffield? Take a look. Hmm. Well... Oh, that. I remember that picture. Hattie took it one summer afternoon out on the lawn. Hattie? Yes, yes, our housekeeper. Well, of course, you remember her, Mr. Fairmont. What was her, uh, full name? Why, it was Mrs... Oh, isn't that funny? I can't seem to remember that. We called her Hattie all. You just weren't coached quite well enough, were you, young lady? What do you mean? I mean that this girl is not Celia Peters at all. I don't know who she is, but she's not Celia. But, Mr. Fairmont, of course I'm Celia. Surely you would know me after only five years. Yes, yes, I would, and you're not Celia. Your game's up, young lady, whoever you are. I've a good idea that Blackburn has put you up to this. 
slick way for him to get his hands on some money. But, Mr. Fearmont... And that goes for you, too, Marukian. I'm not so sure you both aren't mixed up in it, too. Now, look, Mr. Fairmont. I don't know what this is all about, and I didn't ask to come here. This man came and got me away from my work, telling me you wanted to see me. Because you were an old family friend, I came. But I don't intend to stay and be accused of some kind of conspiracy. If you'll excuse me. Yes, you'd better get out, young lady, before I call the police. Police? I never cared much for you, Mr. Fairmont. And now I'm sure I was right. Goodbye. <laughs> Well, after all that frantic search, it turned out to be the wrong girl. And Fearmont suspects a fraud plot. You were lucky to get out of this without an explanation to the police, weren't you, Sheffield? Well, I'm glad this one is over, Marukin. I'm not so sure that it is over. No? How do you figure? It's possible that Fairmont made a mistake. But that was Celia Peters. After all, she's probably changed a lot since she was a kid of 16. Yeah. It's more possible that he made a mistake than that we did. After all, you and I were crossing each other's trails all along. And this other guy, Blackburn, he followed a different trail and arrived at the same girl. It doesn't seem reasonable that we'd all make the same mistake. You're right. And another thing. When I brought her into the hotel to see Fairmont, the desk clerk recognized her and called her Miss Peters. Yeah. He announced her that way over the phone. Well, Celia Peters lived in that hotel a year ago, and the clerk would know her. Sure. Then that was Celia Peters. Yep. Yeah, but what good does it do? We were hired by Fairmont. If he doesn't accept her, our job's done. I wonder. There's still Blackburn, and there's something fishy about the whole thing. I'm going to get to the bottom of it. Maybe we can both save our fees. Okay, what do we do? You tail Celia Peters. I've got some calls to make. I'll meet you later. Probably at the airport. Now, what is Marukian thinking of? The airport? Yes, of course. Because Blackburn had two tickets for the Los Angeles plane. And right now, Blackburn is waiting for Celia in her apartment. Oh. Hello. Oh, who are you? You don't remember me, Miss Peters, but I'm Blackburn, your father's secretary. I've been with him ever since you left. Oh, I see. How did... You... How did I find you here? It was quite a job. But now that I have, there's... No time to waste. Close the door and I'll start talking. I prefer to have the door open. And then I'll be brief. How would you like a quarter of a million dollars? Oh, don't joke. I'm not joking. You can have it in two days. Is it worth 50000 of it to know how you can get it? I don't understand what you're talking about. I haven't $50,000. No, but you will have if you play ball with me. And you'll have the other 200000 left for yourself. I don't think I like the sound of this. You'd better Go? Go? <laughs> I don't know. I spent too much time looking for you. I'm not going to give up now. You're going to the airport with me, and we're flying to Los Angeles. I most certainly am not. Maybe this will help you decide. A gun. Drop that gun, Blackburn. Fairmont. Fairmont, what do you want here? Well, it seems I was just in time. Celia, I was hasty. I see that now. I got to thinking after you left, and I thought I'd better investigate further. Now I see you're not in league with this Blackburn. And if you have some letters or identification, I'll be convinced that you are indeed... Celia Peters. But what difference does it make? What is this all about? Celia, you must come with me to Los Angeles. I've chartered a plane. We'll leave immediately. I'm not going anywhere with you. Why should I? Your father. He's desperately ill. He needs you. What? Whatever arguments you had in the past are forgotten. Surely they won't stop you from going to his bedside. To his bedside? Is he dying? Yes. Oh, no. Oh, poor father. Of course I'll go. Listen, Celia, let me handle this. You keep out of this, you chisel. Celia, your father's will gives you a quarter of a million dollars if you return before your 21st birthday. That's Friday. So that's what Mr. Blackburn was talking about? Yes, and thank goodness I got here when I did. Oh, it's not the money, Mr. Fairmont. It's father. If he needs me, I'll go. Okay, so I lose. You might as well have my two plane tickets. No, thank you, Blackburn. I've chartered a plane. And we'll have to hurry, Celia. There's still not too much time to get to California. <laughs> Celia's going to show up at the airport after all, but not with Blackburn. I wonder if that will upset Mr. Marukian's plan. Why, Mr. Marukian, what are you doing here? I just thought I'd see you off. Oh, yes, Marukian. Well, she's the right girl after all. 
I'll drop a check for you and Mr. Sheffield in the mail tomorrow. Thanks. So you're off to collect your fortune out in Los Angeles, Miss Peters, huh? Yes, I guess so. Sure you've got the right plane? What do you mean? Have you asked the pilot if he's going to Los Angeles? No. Well, I have. He isn't. This plane was chartered for a trip to Florida. Well, I don't understand. There, there must be some mistake. There is. And you made it, Fairmont. Hey, what's going on here? Oh, hello, Sheffield. Glad you're here. You can help me hold Fairmont for the police. Police? Why, what do you mean? I mean the police will be glad to get a hold of you, Fairmont. You're wanted for murder. The Whistler will give you the strange answer to tonight's story in just a moment. Meantime, I want to tell you about the game that's now top favorite among men in the armed forces. It's Salvo, S-A-L-V-O, the exciting game of military strategy in which two persons match wits trying to sink each other's battleships. Signal Oil Company has been supplying thousands of Salvo games to men in uniform. And these letters will give you an idea of how Wetley Ringer, a naval recreation officer, writes, Salvo games are especially popular among troops aboard transports bound for overseas. And those men sincerely appreciate Signal's generosity and thoughtfulness. And from Major Wolf of the Army Special Services comes this letter. The Salvo game that Signal Oil Company has distributed to Army, Navy, and Marine personnel overseas have turned many dull hours into fun. Well, friends, since boys in the service have gotten such a kick out of playing Salvo, the Signal Oil Company thought that you, too, would enjoy this game. So, in addition to the thousands that will continue to be sent overseas... Signal has been able to get a limited number for distribution here at home. To get yours, simply stop at your neighborhood Signal gasoline dealer soon, while his supply lasts, and ask for a Salvo game, S-A-L-V-O. Remember, it's free. And it's the same exciting game for which fighting men around the world are writing Signal Oil Companies these enthusiastic letters. And now, back to the whistler. <laughs> Well, I, Marukian, was right. The police were very glad to get a hold of Mr. Alan Fearmont, that fine, upstanding friend of the Peters family. He wasn't such a friend after all, as it turned out. Marukian said murder, and that's what it was. The murder by poisoning of old Mr. Peters. Yes, it wasn't heart failure at all, but Fearmont didn't think that that would ever be found out. His anxiety to get to Celia before Blackburn did was explained when the details of Peters' will came out. If Celia didn't get back to claim her fortune, the money went into the business, Fearmont's business now. So when Blackburn found Celia, Fearmont had to intervene. He tried to take her on the airplane trip to Florida to keep her away from Los Angeles until after her birthday. But Marukian suspected Fearmont when he refused to identify Cecilia and found out that the airplane trip and then contacted Los Angeles to learn about Mr. Peter's mysterious death. A smart detective, wasn't he? Yes, even Sheffield found that out. Because Marukian deduced the fact that Sheffield was working for both Blackburn and Fearmont. And, as he put it... I'll just take half the fees for keeping my mouth shut about it. <laughs> 